Well guys, is the AMD Vega 56 the best card under $100 to buy in 2024? Or is it even viable to still play games today? Well, all of these questions will be answered in today's video. And what we have here today is a very good unit of a Vega 56, the Strix OC model. So pretty much top of the line card you can buy. And now this card came out in 2017, so nearly seven years ago with an MSRP of $399. However, today you can buy a very good unit like this one for just under $100 on eBay and you can actually buy even cheaper one if you're willing to do a bit of repasting and fixing up like we're going to be doing here today. This one, I paid very cheap for it. I paid around 50 bucks for this card. I actually bought it in euros because I'm from Italy, but that's how much I paid. Now, this card, when it came out, it was meant to be the direct competitor to the GTX 1070. However, there was one little thing that made it a very good card and that is there was a leak in AMD's firmware and it was actually possible to flash this card to the higher tier AMD RX Vega 64. So if I just take this card and put a Vega 64 Strix BIOS on it I will be able to get Vega 64 performance and with a bit of overclocking I might actually surpass that level. Now what does that mean you might be asking? Well Vega 64 was meant to be the competitor of the GTX 1080. Now yes I'm talking about very old cars in today's terms i guess but gtx 1080 is actually not too far away from the rtx 3060 and today we are comparing this card directly to an rtx 3060 12 gigabyte which just to remind you is very close to the rtx 4060 and very close to the rx 7600 xt from amd so you might start to see where I'm going with this, but just disclaimer, this is not a car that you can just buy, plug in and have a very good experience with. You will need to do a full repaste and repad and we will actually start from that because it's an old card. You will then need to do a full BIOS flash on it to make it run properly. And you will then have to do a full undervolting and overclocking on it. But then after you've done all of that, it might just be the best card under $100. So I say we get started. Now guys, if you're buying one of these, it's not as easy as just buying a brand new card in which you just buy one and they will work fine because these cards actually were not as successful at launch. Mostly, well, one, because if not tuned, they really draw too much power. As you can see, they have two 8-pin connectors, but also because they were very well desired for mining. So a lot of these cards have had a very rough life and many today are pretty much at the end of their life. So what you want to do is actually find a good card. And how you do that is you actually find a card which still has the unopened sticker at the back or a card which is from a person that you really trust. So like if a friend of yours had one, but I definitely wouldn't be buying just random RX Vega 56s without a warranty sticker on the internet because 99% of chance they were mined on. So at this point, it should be very easy to open. So this is our actual heatsink. The paste is fully dried. You should also replace this one, but ours is actually pretty good. So I'm gonna keep it and just clean it off. And now let's take a look at the actual die. Now, once I will clean it off, you will see it's very unique because it's not a single square. It's actually a square and two chips right there. And it has also this plating. It's a big PCB again with fan controllers, very different from today's car. But anyways, Let's get cleaning. Okay, so we got the card back to shiny. The pad, we cleaned it. No need to replace it in this case. It's not very crucial. We can see the very unique design on the die. Again, really amazing. And now, nice fresh new paste. I'm using this Iceberg Thermal Fuse Ice Plus. They made very good blue coolers in case you haven't seen it on the channel. But it has a very unique spreading method, but it's good for dyes because this way you make sure to cover it all. Of course, it's non-conductive. So even if we put a bit too much, it's not going to be a big issue. Now, that's definitely too much paste, but we don't really care. It's going to work perfectly. And this way we're sure to cover it. So let's close up the card and get testing. I will see you guys directly in Windows. Now here we are downloading the driver and uh, that's always a very fun process with AMD. Am I right? Am I right? That's why Nvidia has a premium. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead, get everything installed and take a baseline benchmark. Okay, so this is our baseline with five strike. It's not too bad to begin with, but at this point we start 
tuning and the serious testing. Okay, so this is probably the easiest BIOS mod ever. Basically, all you need is GPU-Z, a VF64 BIOS from the same model as yours, so in our case, a Strix, and then you need AMD, basically V-Flash, like a flashing tool. And now with GPU-Z, you just copy the old BIOS, you just go save to file, save it. Okay, so we now have the old BIOS saved and I called it old.rom and we have the new one which we downloaded which is called new.rom. Now, you need ATI flash and again, I downloaded the older version, the 2.8 or 2.7 because the newest one is just not made for these cards. And now you wanna double click ATI win flash and you will get this very simple UI right here. And now you wanna just go load image, desktop, and you wanna grab your new.rom right there, and now you wanna program it. Okay, so we have to go in the CMD and just unlock our ROM, and now basically we have to flash it with the file name. And if we now open uh, GPU-Z, we will see that the clocks are now much higher, 1630. So our BIOS flash is successful, but what matters the most with this BIOS flash is quite simply this. So if we now go ahead and open MSI Afterburner, we now have a much higher power limit slider and we can just play around with it more. So now the real tuning begins because we have everything unlocked. And they have now completed tests and the results are absolutely incredible. So let's go over them. Now, what did they do? Well, after doing the BIOS flash, I did a full undervolt with overclock. So what happened is I will show you the fire strike. I first tried an all out traditional overclock, which is simply just max out the power limit, raise the core clock, raise the memory clock, and then test it out. And the score was already looking really good. We are talking 10 to 15% over the stock of this card, which I remember you, uh, we still tested after the repaste and still is one of the best Vega 56s out there because it's the Strix model, right? But after that, I just thought, hey, lately I've been doing on the channel all these curve undervolts and like stuff with curves. So maybe there is a possibility to do a sort of voltage point overclock on this card as well. And I also remember that like people used to do this for efficiency when it came out. They wouldn't really do it for performance, but they did it for efficiency. So what I did was I flattened the curve. Now I, I will put my final curve on the screen. So in case you want to copy it, you can. Uh, but remember it's card subjective but i flattened the curve and like raised it and basically made it more flat but higher if it makes sense and i run another fire strike and it's the fire strike you can see right here on the screen right now yes twenty-five thousand graphic score on literally a gpu which you can buy right now for 70 bucks 25k now to put this into perspective i will show you the card i am comparing it with and it's a gaming x trio RTX 3060, 12 gigabytes, the best RTX 3060 out there. And that card did 22,000, close to 23,000 in Fire Strike. So this card is on paper close to 10% faster than the 3060 and a whopping 20% faster than our original score. Absolutely crazy, if you ask me, close to 25 actually. But what's even crazier is the scaling in games because we went ahead and we tested two games which I think are representative of the gaming scenario today and they're also the most played Apex Legends and Warzone. Now I will play the footage of the RTX 3060 first. In Apex, as you can see, upon landing we were doing close to 300 with everything on minimum but it really settled down on 250 uh, once landed and while playing we actually were around 220 to 230 uh, FPS the whole time. Now let's play the Warzone footage of the RTX 3060 and here you can see we're doing 170, 180 after landing in a house. Okay, now keep that very closely in mind. Now we'll play the Apex Legends footage of the RX 5700 XT. Yes, it's beating <laughs> the RTX 3060. Now Apex Legends scales a bit better on AMD cards and so does Warzone actually, but this is just absolutely mental. I mean, not only are the average FPS higher, but the 1% lows are also higher. We have a very smooth gaming experience and the whole thing is running flawlessly on a seven-year-old card, which cost me, well, 
let's forget about what I paid because it's ridiculous, but that costs you 70 bucks and all because we knew how to mod it. So guys, the conclusion is rather straightforward. These older cars, I'm speaking about the AMD Vega 56, especially because it's cheaper than Vega 64 and it's just fully unlocked, are just the best thing to buy right now if you're willing to put in the time and effort to learn how to tweak, how to tune the cars and just to push them properly because modern cars are locked. Even on AMD side, the new RX 1700 XT is pretty much locked. And let's not talk about Nvidia, right? Because you cannot really do anything on a 3000 series Nvidia card. But here you can do whatever you want. You can adjust the curve manually. You can flush the BIOS to a better BIOS. You can change the clocks. If you can find a good custom of Vega 56, which was in good conditions, you should definitely buy it. And it will make for a great 1080p gaming build in my opinion, today still. And it's the best card under 100 euros to buy right now. And I can stand by that. But do let me know down in the comments if you agree with this or if you disagree, tell me why. And maybe consider dropping a like and a sub to support the channel. I also have plenty of tutorials about how to undervolt and overclock all the cards out there, even the newest one, so you can extract maximum performance out of them like we've done here today. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.